kids. That's what we call at that time. You just club kids and you go out and you just dance and, and you live for the club. That's actually what keeps you out of drugs, keep you out of trouble, keep you more focused on life and giving you a, a purpose and a reason to live. So today is Saturday, January 2nd, 2021. Who are we speaking with? Ms. Sheba. Sheba, when did, yeah. you fall, when did you fall in love with house music? Ooh, my college days. Um, I went to University of Missouri because I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. So I went to University of Missouri in Columbia, Missouri, a small college town. Um, actually, MTV had came there. They were on a spring break tour looking for dancers from the big eight schools. And um, I uh, won the dance contest. I, uh, they came there and they was looking for two dancers and it was packed with dancers. I entered the competition one, was able to have the opportunity to fly to New York and see what the dance scene was about from with MTV. And I was like, wow, I was so flawed and amazed. And I didn't know it was a house scene because I was into mostly hip hop then around that time. And I was just blown away. And my a friend of mine, he was, um, he was in a gay guy, he was in a gay scene. So he saw me dance. He was actually a friend at school. And he was like, that night, he was like, oh my God, I got to take you to the clubs with me in St. Louis, you know, the gay black clubs in St. Louis. And I was like, okay, take me, please. And I heard the music and the energy, and it was just so me. And I was just like, oh, I fell in love with the house music, the house scene, the people the energy that the people have and just the love and passion they have for music. And I was like, this is so me. And I was probably about 20 maybe. And I was like, this is just so me. I, I mean, the soulful, cause I'm from Missouri. So we did a lot of techno music, techno house music, or either using a techno house or hip hop. So. When I heard the, the classic deep soul house music, I was like, yes, this is me, baby. So I, that's how I kind of found myself in dancing. And I was like, I never looked back after that. <laughs> I kept going forward with the house music because I wanted to be on the East Coast. So I had a friend that was, my friend who introduced me to house music, he was also friends with uh, a DJ in, um, DC name, his name was um, Cedric. He was like the house magic, house mother of DC, uh, which the club scene in DC, I think that was around 1990s, was just off the hook in DC. I guess uh, the club here in DC was called uh, Tracks. So at that time, Tracks was happening. So what we would do from St. Louis, we would go from St. Louis to DC to come all the way to listen to house music and dance to house music, fly from St. Louis to DC and also go to Baltimore because Baltimore was a hot club paradise. So I was able to visit that. And I was just like, my mind was blown away. I still haven't hit New York club scene yet but that fed me enough to say, you know what? I got to get to the big city to see what that's about. So that's what kind of drew me to house music. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. You mentioned tracks in DC and you mentioned uh, the paradox at Baltimore. Describe the Baltimore house music scene. I remember you mentioned once a DJ named Tommy Davis. Yeah, Tommy Davis. Uh, so the Basement Boys, uh, Alternate Oh my God, it, it was just, I think that's the time when they had like maybe three DJs at night, four DJs at night, and nobody used to do that. 
everybody just used to be one DJ that night and that's it around that time in the 90s. And Baltimore already was doing that three and four DJs at one night because they needed it. It was, the party started probably about nine o'clock, eight o'clock at night, maybe nine. But I didn't get there until maybe one or two in the morning and it goes on to like six or seven in the morning. And we dance, baby, we dance. I mean, it's to the point where you feel the spirit from their, from their music. Like I never ever had this experience ever as a dancer. I just came out of my clothes. I actually got naked. I think the only thing I had on was thongs. I mean, the music was that intense. I was like, oh my God, I felt like I had just died and, and I just was reborn again. So, and and I had, I think I had just moved to the East Coast around that time. So I was going through a lot, like transitioning from life to trying to find my place in New York City. So, my friend was like, let's go to Baltimore. And I went to Baltimore and I just like, it, but to me, it felt like I was being reborn. I was being baptized. It was like the Holy Spirit was all over me and I just didn't care. I mean, it was just that intense. Like one person and my friend, he, he caught the Holy Ghost. He came out of his clothes and we was just, baby, you, you probably thought we was like from Zulu Lulu. <laughs> we was getting it. It was, it was, it was, it was a fantastic experience. I never forget that experience. And if I could do it again, I would do it again. I wouldn't change any bit of it. Do you remember the DJ that night? It was the Basements Boys. It was Tommy Davis. Um, yeah, I just, I don't remember that particular DJ that was brought that out of me, but the cluster was building at night because it was just, it was building. It was just building and whoo, child. Mm. And that's one thing for being in, from the Midwest, I was able to go from DC to Chicago. Chicago, I went to the warehouse and I was able to like, just get on a plane and just get there. Just, I just, and sometimes I dress at the, uh, in the bathroom in the uh, airport just to be ready because it was like a transition. My family didn't know what I was doing. I was with a bit of a bunch of club kids. That's what we called at that time. You just club kids and you go out and you just dance and and you live for the club. That's actually what keeps you out of drugs, keep you out of trouble, keep you more focus on life and giving you a, a purpose and a reason to live. And for me, the club scene had gave me that purpose, that artistic ability, because in school is just like you, you just need to be smart. And, and fortunately my school did give me ability to be artistic, but not really to the extent that you want it to be, you know, it's like you had to fit in a certain realm. You had to, you want to do ballet or tap, you had to look a certain way, you had to build a certain way. And to me, dancing freely was just the way of just captivating my whole spirit, my whole soul, without being um, chastised, without being manipulated, or without being like told what to do. So I was able to reach out that box with the club scene. And so all my club friends, we were the same way. We we made outfits during the day and at night, and here we go. It's like another another person. We became alive again. Yes. <laughs> talk to me about, you talked about uh, outfits. Talk to me about fashion and clubbing. Oh my God. Well, a lot of, a lot of my friends, they made their outfits. I made, I didn't make my outfits either. They made it or I just, I just go buy, buy it. I'm just like, I just see, I love fashion. If I see, especially being in New York, um, especially in the nineties, you have big stores that just, it's, it seemed like they cater to club life there. Like they will make, make clothes or sell clothes just for the club scene. And then sometimes you, I mean, one piece at that time in the nineties, you, 
pay five hundred dollars just to, for like a shirt or 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 a, a pair of latex pants just to be in the club seat, and you'll get it. It's not like you had some fabulous job or sometimes you'll be studying you're a student too but it's somehow you know you want the outfit you go get it and it's yours because that night you had to show up at the club and you had to be the baddest bitch that night whether it's outfit or dancing and that's how the club scene it was all about a look too it wasn't just attitude or just being nasty to each other it was about when you dance, you, you want to feel the part of whatever you in. Like if you dressed up like Superwoman, you want to feel like you're Superwoman at night or whatever character that you become that night. You just want to be that, that person at night because every day, you know, you couldn't be who you are. You had to pretend, you had to fake. And in the club scenes, you didn't have to do that. You just be who you are. And that's and that's the music of of the club scene. How did you balance uh, a day job and nightlife? Oh, man. Well, I live for the night. I'm a night person. Um, so you knew you had to do what you had to do so you could be that person at night. So I, I, I did it. It's just that you just knew you had to do it. Like, I just, I'm not a person that like to depend on anyone or ask for anything or I'm just a go-getter. I like to have what I like to have when I want it. So I had to sacrifice what I needed to do to, to get what I want that night. And that's what I did. I, I mean, luckily I had jobs that would just pay me really well or, you know, it just, it worked out. So I didn't really have to like, you know, like, where am I get this from? I, as long as I had a job, I had everything I wanted, you know? And being an independent worker, so it, it makes it a lot easier because you have a little bit more free time. So, yeah. <laughs> Talk to me about Josephine Baker. What role did she play in influencing you as a person and then you as a dancer? Wow. Josephine Baker, I... I just idolize her or just look up to her. She inspired me because um, she's from St. Louis too. Um, she's from actually East St. Louis, another part of St. Louis, which is like 30 minutes away from St. Louis. And she inspired me because of her movements, like not only her movements, but her her way of just striving to get wherever she wanted to be and through dancing that she made that happen. That was a voice like, you know, I didn't come from a lot. She didn't come from a lot for being from St. Louis, but we had this magic and she, she draw me into that magic where, you know what? I don't have everything that I wanted to have financially, but I know I have the tools to get me there. And that's what Josephine did, Baker did. She made her movements and her, and she made it all about her life, her dance. And, and she took it to another level where it was just made people be like, oh, oh, oh just taken by her. And, it's, it, and it wasn't about just about like, um, my dance move is fiercer than yours, or I could do this better. It's her energy. It's her, her, her love for her passion that she was chanting into something else different. You could feel that when she's dancing. Like she's becoming this whole new person. And that's what influenced me with her. It's just like, you become a whole new being. Like, um, some things in, I mean, this helped me throughout my life. Like some things in school, I wasn't great at, but soon as, as soon as I, I, I dance or bust a move, it's just like, oh my God, I can put you in this. I can make you better in this. And, and through dancing was my communication. So mm -hmm. yeah, through dancing. So that's what she inspired me so much because of her communication through dancing. And that's what I learned to really speak through her. How would you describe your dance style? Wow, since COVID, oh, I haven't danced since. <laughs> I just kind of work out now, stay fit, but oh, dancing, oh, hell. Mm. 
it's, it's, it's silent right now. I just, that's where I'm at now. I'm at a place where sometimes I feel like I don't even want to dance again. I, I don't know. I feel confused at this place where I'm at now. Um, I feel definitely I'm shifting into another dynamic person that dancing is going to bring me. It may not be that same quick flow, intense move, but it's definitely a more mature space that I am with dancing. And um, it's more like I'm owning who I am through dancing, through my whole sexuality, my whole being and my whole passion for spirituality. That's what I, I feel like my dancing is going. It's definitely not the same as, you know, before COVID because of after COVID, I feel like I had a chance to step back and look at like what direction that I want to take dancing for me. Yeah. When you first moved to New York, do you remember some of the clubs you used to go to back in the day? Yes. Uh, my my first club that really stood out to me is Sugar Babies. What is Sugar Babies? Sugar Babies was a, was a small club in Manhattan, like Lower East Side. I guess the A and B A and B area street in there. It was a small club, but baby, the music was pumping. It was a diverse club. It was energy. It was love. It was on, on a Monday, a Monday night. So like most people don't go out on a Monday night because you got to work, but that place was packed. So Sugar Babies was a small club. After a year or so, they move into on um, Houston Street, a bigger club. Like I think it was Urban Plaza was there. They move into that club on Monday and it was it was amazing. They have a live drummer, dancers on stage, the DJ was rocking. And at that time, I don't even remember what DJ it was. I feel awful, but it was a banging DJ. And that was one of my clubs that I love going to was Sugar Babies. Oh, my kicks was amazing. I felt like I could fly. I mean, you see people there in tutus. So it was just the Monday night was, it was just, it was, a, it was magnificent. Then I went to, I guess the, the tunnel a couple of times. Uh, that was cool. Wasn't really me, but it was cool. Uh, I went to, I went to the shelter a couple of times, loved the music there. Still wasn't really me, it was kind of dark for me there. Uh, then I went to Body and Soul on, like I think on a, yeah, it was on a Sunday. And uh, a friend what of mine was like, Body and Soul? Me, body what, and is, soul. What, what is Body and Soul? Body and Soul, wow, it was eclectic, it was, diverse um, you could get all types of music i mean you may get a missy elliott track and like with the mix of reggae in there or and then it's and you and like i said i came from hip-hop i came from jazz i i studied a combination of dancing so when i heard that i was like oh my god we don't have to be stuck in one place in music all the time because even though house rules the world to me, but I love to hear like different types of general music. And that's what Body and Soul did to me as a dancer. So it just brought even more stuff out of me. I felt like I can do plies. I felt like it's just, I just felt like, you know, I can do my modern dance there. It was just, it just brought the soul out of me. That's what Body and Soul did. It just brought, it's just, okay, I'm this little country girl from St. Louis. Now I'm body and soul just grew me up into a woman, a diva. So that's what body and soul did to me because it, it reached into me and just brought me into so many layers of me, which sometimes when you listen to one type of music, you kind of just stay there. You can kind of choreograph different things from it have the spirit to chant into you different things or it comes. But when you hear like tracks like a Missy Elliott B and then a, a B from a classic and then you're like, oh my God, I remember my auntie was playing this and 
or, you know, it's just like things just start to move and elevate. And that's what made that just so amazing. And then you can hear Grace Jones track, like, wow, <laughs> that was like, that was like chanting into a whole different world. That's what, that's what body and soul is. Who were the DJs? Danny Kravitz, uh, Francois K, and Joe Cassell. You also got an opportunity to tour with Body and Soul and became a Body and Soul dancer. Uh, how did those opportunities come about? Yes. Um, ooh, I think one day I, I was, uh, Joe came to the dance floor, he was dancing and uh, he was just like, I was dancing, I think with Marcellus at night and we was just, the music was just going and so, Marcellus, which is another great dancer, he, he tends to bring the best out of you when you dance. And so we was just feeling the music and Joe was there and he was like, wow. I think he was captured by the way I was moving and dancing. So one day he's like, oh, you know, if I ever have some work coming up, I wanna make sure you be a part of it and blah, blah, blah. And you know, it's New York City. You hear things like that all the time. Like, so you're like, okay. I'm from the show me say, I'm like, pretty much you got to show me. Ta, <laughs> okay, so, so, and he did follow through and he, he called me one day and he was like, look, you know, I'm, we traveling, you know, in Japan and we would like to you to be a part of it. Would you like to be a part of it? And I was like, oh my God, yes, indeed. But that ride, I couldn't go because I had just sprained my ankle dancing at the shelter. Dancing with another amazing dancer, Eddie, and I couldn't go because I sprung my ankle that day and I was out of commission for maybe a month or so. But he's like, that's okay. We got more work coming up. So I keep you in mind. And I was like, please do, please do. And he did, he kept me in mind. And I, my first time to Japan and we that night we had to dance usually two nights back to back for like 12 hours. One party was one day and the next party was the, the other day. And usually they're about 10 to 12 hours a party. Wow. Wow, yes, back to back dancing. So, and that was amazing. <laughs> and then uh, describe body and soul in Japan. What is that like? Oh, whole different energy but amazing energy still. Um, mm, first of all, I mean, it's so eclectic, the way they, they have everything designed and decorated, it's like, it's, it's mind blowing. Um, the interior is for the club is set up, amazing. The sound system is just, so clear it goes through your heart and you feel all the bass and all the music uh the setting of the stage is just so oh uh, it's, it's 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 just perfect um and the people are just so passionate about music it's just like wow like i listen to music and i feel like the music bass but then I, I went to Japan, they not only feel the music of it, but they listen to the words. Like me, I, I'm not really listening to the words. I'm listening to like the music, the bass, the instrument, the electric sound. Them, they like, they can't speak English, but then they sing in the song that's in English. Like they know every single word. And I'm like, wow, I'm mind blown. Like, this is like a song that my great auntie used to listen to, but now it's a classic and they know that song and they know all the words. And I'm like, I know none of those words. And that's what amazed me that they knew all these soulful classic songs from black people and they knew how to say it in English by singing it. Like that's, that's what mind blowing to me. And then just the energy of the people at that time, it wasn't much dancing there because they were so captured 
by the musicians and the DJs and the dancers. But now that was in 2006. Now that the culture has changed so that now you can see more dancers, they are dancing more. They are just participating in all realms of just being in the in the house music scene. Not saying that they weren't before, but more so you can see more dancers now in in the uh, in the Japan area of body and soul, which is great. And then you also uh, went on tour to Hong Kong with Body and Soul as well. How was it different between Hong Kong and, and Japan, if at all? Or was it different at all? In terms of the vibe? Yeah, in terms of vibe, it, it is a little more different because in Japan, you have more of just the Japanese people there. In Hong Kong, you have people from all over the world, like a lot of people from England and so they mash up into this club scene together and it just become, it's cool, it's, it's a great vibe, but it's, to me, it's not the same vibe as uh, Japan. It's definitely a, a, good, a good, happy vibe. It's more like you're putting on a show than just being of the club. Like Japan makes you feel like you're just being of the club. Like New York, you're just a part of the club, which, to me, I love that vibe because you, that way you can dig into yourself a little bit more deeper than just being like, you a show. Like, you know, that's not like who I am. I just like it to just happen. And so that's what I love about New York and Japan and traveling to those places instead of Hong Kong. Hong Kong, you are the show. So. I'm like, I don't want to be the show. Let's just club this, <laughs> okay? But it's a different vibe. So that's the difference. And then after Body and Soul closed, what other clubs did you go to in New York City? New York City, uh, wow, it wasn't really much. I, I mean, in between, I was going to like different clubs when Body and Soul, I, like for instance, I went to the warehouse up in the, on the Bronx. Now that was really catchy and, and that was really, I love that club. It was, it was a hot club. It was, I had to travel way to the Bronx, but <laughs> it was worth every bit of it. I, I love going to the Bronx uh, dancing at the warehouse. I think Andrew Collins, yeah, it was Andrew Collins, a big gay scene there, very free dancing. Um, uh, after Body and Soul, I, I think I just did like a lot of the park stuff, maybe. Like Coney Island, the park, uh, 718. So let's let's stay with the park stuff. Describe for people the, the music in the park. Um, at Coney Island and at Fort Green Park. Yeah, Fort Green Park. Yes, Coney Island, Fort Green Park. Um, it was mainly outdoors, so you just kind of they just kind of play a lot of classics at those two parties. Um, they didn't really, to me, go outside the box in music. They kind of just stay with a format where most people, the audience, want to listen to. So. It was, it was, to me, it was a fun thing because it was outdoors, it's free. Most of the time it was sunny. The people were happy. It was a great vibe. I mean, you can't get any better than that. You're dancing on Coney Island on the boardwalk and a bathing suit. So that was always, that was always liberating and fun. And Fort Green was always a good vibe. You see all these melanated people and it's just so beautiful and everybody's there for one thing to dance and love and hey you can't get no better than that <laughs> so yeah that was gorgeous <laughs> and then what is 718 sessions uh, 718 was sunday nights as well um that's after body and soul pretty much. So we were able to like still get our groove a little bit. 
That was amazing. Uh, Danny uh, played classic mostly. Then he had guests, which was his guest was amazing most of the time. Oh, it was it was just a, it was a it was a good vibe. It was diverse. Um, it was a lot of lot of New Yorkers, which I love because they were great dancers. Um, and you got like a lot of old school people who used to come there, which was always always like watching them, and it's always a great experience to learn from them, no matter what. But it was it was it was a great experience. I love uh, seven one eight club beats. <laughs> yes. And then, how would you describe house music? Well, uh, how would I describe house music? Woo! <laughs> exactly. Yes. Um, Oh my God, it's mind blowing, uh, liberating, magical, definitely magical. Mm, it's, especially when you have a, a DJ that can mix the house music correctly. And to me, it's not really about like how you mix and how you do that because as a dancer, we don't really have time to, you know, we're, we're not there to try to coordinate that in our minds, but it's just a good flow, a good music, a good tone, a good, a, just a good beat. Just, you know, I love bass. That's what gets me. Bass is just, ooh, it's just, oh, it's just liberating bass. So once I have a good bass and a good flow, I just, it's just, house music just, it's just, it's magical to me. That's what I can say. It, I know it saved a lot of people's lives. It saved my life for either like from being, to me, I felt like I can go a mental place, like just being coping in this world, I probably can check out mentally, like just go mental bazaar somewhere. But house music has balanced me into this person that helped me stay spiritual. It helped me ground myself on a on an everyday level of dealing with so, the society of being a melanated woman, being a woman, just being, you know, this this place in this world as we are, as 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 melanated people, and it helped me stay strong and keep my strength and keep my head up and say, I am black and I am proud and I'm gorgeous and I'm gonna walk with an arch in my back and I am a diva. That's what house music do to me. Yes, <laughs> it reminds me, it gives me that check mark. Especially, I say, especially house music is a birth of like, of, of, of just woman power. Like I listen to all these women who sing house music. I mean, gosh, they are just amazing. Like, oh, they just, they just bring house, they bring church music, they bring house music and they just ball into one and just, just make it into a, a beautiful stone. It's just a stone of fire, right? <laughs> like, That's perfect. Some of the artists is just, you can't, you can't stop. It's just, woo, it's, it's, it's definitely uplifting. I love it. Do you have a particular memory uh, or a night where body and soul, where it was just like, this is why I come to this party. This is magic. This is why I came to this party. Yeah. I have a, yes, I have a great memory. Uh, it was in oh, a couple of them, but this particular one, Body of Soul was last night was in vinyl. Um, they were closing and it was the last night and it was the last dance and it was Charles, Marcellus and a group of us was all in a circle dancing and it just came over me and I just, I just caught the spirit. And I just, I just ran around the club in the bathroom I just, I dance. I just, I, I don't know what came over me, the music, the, the energy of the people, 
we knew this wasn't going to be the last one. It wasn't really about that. It was just that we was just so all grateful to have this opportunity because we know that it may not get like this again. It may not happen like this again. So we embraced that moment and that music. I, I don't know who was DJing at night. All three of them were, but this last track, woo wee you gonna make me have hot flashes. <laughs> okay, yes. <laughs> it was it was amazing. Yes, that was. Yep, that was really one of my my really spiritual points that I had there. I had some more great moments too, but that was really a highlight. <laughs> Sometimes I notice some of the young dancers may want to battle. How do you deal with that? Has it ever happened to you? And then how do you deal with that? Oh my God, yes. Oh. Yeah, that's, yeah, there is a battling crew out there, a battling crew out there, especially the millennials. They, they want to battle you and challenge you. And usually sometimes I dance with them. It's about a body language. You dance with someone. Uh, it's not about a challenge. So you have to teach them that sometimes a person can inspire you to dance, but you don't need to challenge them to be better. Like, like for instance, we did challenge to like when we were, you know, starting the club scene dancing, but our challenging was a sense of, you know what? Um, wow, you're an amazing dancer. I want to dance with you so I can learn from you, not to think I'm gonna beat you. But if you did beat me, it's just gonna make me better. I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna practice. I'm gonna just keep going at it and I'm gonna just keep striving. So arts was more like a lesson of teaching you how to dance with each other instead of battling each other. Like, do you understand? It's a, like, I feel like they just come up to you, uh, just like, just wanna just, go at you and it's it's not about that you, i have to sometimes redirect them when i'm dancing to let them know that you know it's not about you know you're doing tricky moves it's not about you can flip over your top of your head it's and if you can do that better than me it's about dancing together to make make a story when you dance together and build that's how we used to battle each other now now that becomes a battle because i'm feeding from you you feeding from me and now we just like this energy is just exploding and something bigger now that you look great i look great and our moves core side with each other we so this that's what i try to redirect the young kids like when i see them because they do they try to come for me so much and i'm like Child, first of all, I don't have that 20 something energy that you have. And so it's no way I can go there with you. But when you dance, you, you become, you could become grounded in it. So I don't need to do those flips to make me great. I, you don't either. I mean, if that's what you want to do, you can do it, but you don't need to be like, oh my God, you did a trick better than me. No, it's about how you feeling. Someone could do a flip and if they're not feeling it, it's, it's kind of like useless. It's like, you just did a flip. Oh, cool. But once once you come from your, your chakra, your heart, your spirit, baby, you could just do it. You could just do a shoulder move and it's bad. You know, somebody do a shoulder move, you'd be like, that bitch do it up. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. It's just, it's about you just doing it. Yeah. You about from your spirit. What advice? would you give the next generation of dancers? Hmm. Okay, that's a, that's a, I think that's a great question because I, I see that now a whole lot. Stop being a copycat. <laughs> Just dance, baby. Just be you. Just channel into you. Nothing is perfect. It's all about a feeling. So, like this TikTok stuff, it irritates me. Oh my God. I'm like, right. oh, first of all, like I said, it's copycat, it's mimicking, it's, it feels, it's like a robot. There we go again, back to those robots. Nobody wants to be cloned, but we're so cloned. 
hello. So it's like, I'm like, oh my God. It's, it's, it's one thing I could say one great thing about, it. I always find something positive. You move me, you're moving, you're moving. Movement is great, moving is great. But if you're still gonna be a robot, what the purpose of it, of movement? Just that's one thing I would say to the young dancers. Yeah, everything's look fabulous. The dancers back in the day were totally amazing. You can learn things from it, but use your own. Just like be your own individual on the dance floor. And that's why house music is turning into a not individual alley thing. And that's what made house music so different from any genres like hip hop or any other type of music, jazz, whatever, we, we can be able to channel into something that is our own and call it our own. And people often ask me, why don't I teach dance class? And, you know, I did dance class when I was growing up in college, teaching kids how to dance and a dance group, but chore choreographing for dance groups and stuff like that. But as an individual, I just think that everybody has the ability to teach themselves the movement of what they want. I can't teach you that. You can teach yourself that because I don't want like 30 Shivas running around, even though I kind of see it anyway, but hey, it's just something that you have to know how to do on your own. Just it's dancing is an individual. That's why God created us all so different. And that's a part of who you are. So. That's one advice that I would just say, tune into your own individuality when you dance and don't try to be like anyone else. Yes. And then, and then what advice would you give to DJs? Play for the dancers. <laughs> Watch the dancers. I mean, I don't know if they dance now, but yeah, before, play for the dancers. That's the advice, what I would say. Definitely feel what you're feeling, but back in the day, what made DJs so amazing, which there are some DJs still like that today, they they play for the dancers. They like, wow, okay, like, like when I used to go to the clubs, when I first in the beginning started going to the club, I let the DJ know I'm here. Here's my outfit. Here's my pumps and I'm ready to go. How you want to do this? Because if we, if, if you plan the music for the dancers, then the dancers can, you can control it through the, the music and we control it through the dance floor. So it's a connection together where we can just blow the club up and we can just make it like magical, holy ghostness, everything you need is going to happen. And that's what a dancer and DJ match up together. And I think at, at some places it got lost. It become all about the DJ. And that's not what where music is about with dancing and DJ, especially house music. We were together. Like I I seen DJs then saw people that they know that know that's gonna turn that floor up. They hit in the house, let's put it, let's pump it now. I didn't see that action happen. And I was just like, and it's, and it's just like, wow. Even as a dancer, when I know a certain dancer is in the house, I'm like, oh, it's about to, it's, it's about to be raw now. It's about to, it's, you know, I mean, it's the same energy as a DJ. If I know that particular DJ is gonna be DJ, I'm like, I know we are gonna pump tonight. And it's that, that togetherness we have and we need to still stick together. It's not about one, it's not about the other. It's about the flow of the whole community, dance music. Yes. That's well said. What do you what do you see as the future of nightlife after COVID? Will it survive? I think the park scenes are going to do good. Like all park events at this point is going to be really, really great to do if you capture on that. The club life, mm, it's like, mm, right. It definitely can come back, but uh, in a different way. It's not going to definitely be the same. 
I, I totally feel that it's not going to be the same. Yeah, I, I don't think it's going to be. It's going to be different, but not the same. If you were to do your own parties, describe the perfect party. If you were going to do your own party. <laughs> wow, describe my own party. OK, that's easy. Uh, a great DJ. A great DJ, just a DJ who can play. Um, just all collective music. Um, to me, I, I, I would would say body and soul would be a great example. I mean, the, those I would like all different elements of people. Uh, just uh, strong DJs where there is two or three, just just bringing out diverse music, diverse genres of music, uh, and people who just ready to dance, who's ready to feel the beat. We have no judgmental of anything, of music, of people. Just come in from all one purpose and just give love and dance. That's my, that's my perfect party. I think Body and Soul has, has totally done that. And it could continue to be done if we don't continue to sell our souls. Just keep it raw. That's the perfect way to end this interview. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, Chiba, for the fantastic interview. All right. Thank you. Enjoy your Saturday. Thank you so much.